So basically, something that people have wanted to do for a long time using the Lima is uh, actually be able to see the clips from Ableton Live. What would be really nice is if instead of scrolling up and down scenes and then firing on the horizontal, it would be cool if you could actually see these scenes and you could actually press a button and just fire it. Uh, and people have done this to varying degrees of success over the last few years using hacks, using Python, and all this kind of unofficial stuff that you have to be very clever to be able to use. And um, yeah, it's kind of worked, but sometimes um, there'll be a minor update to a version of Ableton Live or something. And as it's, it wasn't an official feature, sometimes, sometimes these things kind of broke. Um, now, obviously, now we have Max for Live, and this is amazing <laughs> for us and for Lima users because suddenly we have a door into Ableton Live, which actually gives us access to all the parameters that we want. So now we can see things like uh, clip names, and we can see things like clip colors, and we can see the status of things. So I can see if a track is playing, if a track is not playing. So what we've built at Jazzmuton is basically an official um, Ableton Live really integrated controller that really lets you do this stuff and actually is completely reliable because it's using uh, the Max for Live functionality. And once this is on the screen, then you'll be able to see how nice it looks. Okay, the nice thing about this setup is it's actually completely plug and play. So you noticed before, I had this jazz editor software and I had to um, open up the jazz editor or a Relima template and then it would populate the screen and this would control my live set. Um, also, you had to know the IP address of the computer and you had to originally do some setup stuff on the Lima. <coughs> That's not necessary at all anymore. So basically, now it will completely auto-detect my Lima and it's auto-configured and all the mappings are completely automatic so you don't have to do any MIDI mapping whatsoever. So, on the master channel, I'm going to drop a Max for Live object. <laughs> So this is the Jazz Mutant Max for Live object. It's called Lima Clip Launcher. Sorry, I'm just going to close Jazz Editor first. Okay. <laughs> Looking nice and ghetto style. I like it. All right, I'm going to drop that. <laughs> okay, that's going to be dropped on the master. Bang, there's our Max for Live object. Uh, there it is. <laughs> there it is. And now, you'll see that on the Lima, all the clips and all that stuff have been automatically populated. So that's pretty damn amazing. So that's the first really cool thing. So what I can do now is I can actually scroll and I can fire my clips from here. the next scene. So that's nice. Um, basically I can also resize the grid. So here you've got the scroll bar. I can scroll left and right. But some people might want to be able to see lots of tracks simultaneously. In that case they can be a little bit small, whilst other people might want to see just a few tracks. And I can choose that here. By holding this, I can actually set the number of tracks visible. So now I've got a few tracks visible. Now I've got more tracks visible. I can do the same for the number of scenes. By holding this. So now you can see, I can see up to 16 scenes. I want them a bit bigger. I can do that. Now, Ableton Live, um, when you access the Live API, if you've got a really, really big set um, and you've got a lot of stuff going on, sometimes the information coming live from the API can be 
um, a little bit slower than is ideal. And of course, the lemma can only show the information when it's available. So to get around this, what we've done is implemented the performance mode. And what the performance mode does is instead of getting which clip is playing and the track names and all this kind of stuff live, it will render it. It will basically take all this information and store it in memory. And now it's going to be lightning fast. So you can see it works really quickly then. Of course you can do things. Change something in my live set, so if I move this clap here, you can see that it's moved over on the Lima 2. If I move it back, it moves on the Lima. If I rename a track, so let's rename the kick channel. Kick 22. You can see updates on the Lima 2. Or if I add a track, you can see that a new audio channel appears. If I delete a track, that disappears. So the clip launcher is a really powerful way to be able to just instantly work with whatever is in your session view. And now, also, apart from the clip launcher, there's a load of other features. So if I press this button down here, a new panel appears, and here I've got my levels. And remember, the nice thing about this is not just that this is controlling the levels in live, this was completely possible with the Lima before, but what's important about this is that the mapping is completely automatic. All right, so basically all this mapping is automatic. Um, so if we look in the MIDI here, this is all the MIDI from the setup before. I can actually delete all this. So all the MIDI mappings have disappeared now. So this is all being controlled by OSC, and it's just a case of dropping this Max for Live object on the master channel, and then all the mappings are completely automatic. So you've got your volumes there. So it's a little devices tab here, which I'm not going to show you now. If I press this top section, I get access to my sends. So you can see that there's four sends or return tracks on the bottom. One, two, three, four. And these correspond to the four sends or, and returns in my live set. So I can put some reverb on the clap as before. So there's a kind of delay effect. Or some reverb. So again, this is all automatically mapped, all ready to go. There's another kind of pitch delay effect on here. Okay, and then we've got another tab on the side here. You probably can't see the text, but it's called Mixer. And this is basic functionality, of course, you'll understand exactly what this is. So you've got your mutes. And you've got your solo stuff. You've also got your record and your pans, all that kind of stuff. OK, and the third, and this is the Basically, the feature which I'm not going to show completely because there's a lot of power behind this switch and actually we want to save the best stuff for last and you'll have to wait for the official release to see exactly what this does. But here, there's a devices panel and for example, what this can do, at the moment, I've got an interface to control the filter delay which is on one of the return channels. So if I just play the clap and put that through the filter delay, Okay, I'm just playing the clap now. So here I can control the filter delay itself. So I can change... Let's send something to the filter delay first. Okay, that's going to the filter delay. 
And now I can change things like the frequency bandwidth, 